I honestly don't know what to do anymore. I, I don't get why this is so difficult and so stressful. I think I'm just gonna quit. I was pretty much beaten by a machine. So I got a 3D printer. I've been wanting one of these since December. I got to use one that my cousin owns. I made a few TikToks on it and I noticed how niche, but sometimes useful a 3D printer can be. I don't know, maybe I just like buying and unboxing things. The one I got specifically is the Ender 5 Pro. We'll go into the differences and features of each one a little bit later, but now we have to build this thing. You know, for how heavy the box was, I was really impressed on how neat everything was packaged. There are a lot of components. From the extrusion mechanics, the screen, the C-axis frame, the top frame, the bed, and the bottom frame, it might seem a bit difficult, but it's really simple. I don't want this to be a how to build guide since the instruction booklet is pretty forthright, but let's build it quickly. As always, a neat workspace is advised since you'll be working with large pieces of hardware. Everything is basically screw on and done. We're adding the four 2040 profiles onto the bottom frame first. Don't worry about cabling, that's the last bit we'll do. After doing everything manually, I remembered that I had an electric screwdriver which really sped up everything. Once we've attached everything to the bottom frame, adding the top frame is actually easier. Just make sure you positioned everything correctly and screw everything tightly. Next is going to be the C frame, which connects both the bottom to the top frame. And now you can see we're almost done and lined up with the whole frame. All that's left is to screw on the bed to the C-frame and the LCD screen to the right side. With that, all you're missing is how you're going to position the spool holder for the filament and where your extrusion mechanism is going to be set and it's done. Cabling isn't really difficult, but make sure to follow the instructions closely so you won't have to troubleshoot anything. And this is where everything got a little bit interesting. I consider myself decent when it comes to tech, and I thought that I could troubleshoot myself out of anything. But these three things almost broke me. After turning on the printer for the first time, it started blinking and not powering on. This was the easiest thing to solve, I just swapped the voltage from the back and it fixed the issues. Then I got this error message. At first, I googled it to see if anyone else had had this issue, and a lot of people did. The only thing I had to do was update the software, and that's what I did. So I thought I had fixed the problem, and I went ahead and tried to print a pig. But nothing in life is easy, especially with technology. I didn't record this, but here's a screenshot on what my next issue was. And this is the issue that almost made me return the printer. Explaining it in basic terms, the printer needs to home, which just means to return to its default position within the axis. The problem was the nozzle was not moving at all. Online searches sent me to either the cabling or the hardware issues. I noticed that one of the axis connections had been damaged in shipping, so for the longest time, I thought that this was the issue. YouTube, Google, forums, even Bing, nothing helped me. I considered throwing in the towel, but when nothing goes my way, my last resort is my dad. He's an engineer and he's my go-to when I have any issues related to tech. He told me several times to call the company, but that's located in China. And being the stubborn ass that I am, I was not going to do that. In the end, he called the company and troubleshot his way into fixing it. <sighs> Turns out it was corrupt firmware and it only took him three hours against my three days of testing this out. So thank you, dad. Let this be known that I formatted the micro SD and I put the new software in and that still didn't fix it. But I guess I'm just dumb. Coming back to the printer after an exceedingly long time, my first test project was this little dog right here. There were a few things that I wanted to make to kit out the printer. First was fixing the cable situation, so I made a cable shroud. 
I noticed that I did not have any of the screw nuts that allowed you to place things in the printer, so I made those as well. And the last thing I made was this little toolkit holder. Just simple quality of life things. All the designs were taken from Thingiverse. This is a site where creators upload their 3D models completely for free. They have pretty cool designs, so I would recommend you check them out. I do need to learn how to 3D model, but I will get there when I get there. If you're looking into buying a 3D printer, there's a few things I would recommend. Keep in mind that I know next to nothing about these things in particular, and what I do know, I learned from Google searches, YouTube, and my cousin who's a bit 3D printer savvy. These are what you would call entry-level 3D printers. The Creality Ender 3 and the V2 version are probably what you would want to start out with. It's the most budget-friendly option coming from Creality at around $180 or $250. Even though it might seem a bit pricey and you still have to factor in the filament costs, it's what I would call a starting point. The one I bought, the Creality Ender 5 Pro, is about $350 and that's still considered an entry-level 3D printer. But this one's a bit different though. Since it has a cage-like structure, this helps manage out the vibrations, leading to a better print. Being the Pro version, it's actually really silent when you compare it to the Ender 3. Ender 3 owners can probably attest to that. Comparing it to the Ender 3, which has a plastic extruder, the Ender 5 has a metallic one, which can lead to more durability and also stronger pressure, which then leads to better prints. There are also other options like the CR-10S and the Sir Moon, which looks amazing, but I just don't know enough about them to speak about them. There are probably tons of options I haven't mentioned, but as I said, I am learning as I go, and I think I went a bit overboard. Oh well. For now, I'm enjoying my working 3D printer. I'm making a sort of dock with a wireless charger inside it for my AirPods Pro. If I manage to finish it, I'll throw an image on screen right now of how it looks like. Leave me some ideas in the comments on what I should make, and if you own a 3D printer, let me see some of your designs that you've made. Remember that a like and a sub goes a long way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow me on all my other social media, and bye.